What's going on guys? Marco here with Dynasty Nerds and I am bringing you my running back start sets for week seven. All right, guys, so I am going to start with my fades for week seven at the running back position. These are my, well, sits, fades, kind of whatever you want to call them. Um, but let's jump into it, and I'm going to start with the Packers running backs, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. I'll have to admit here, I was wrong, especially with A.J. Dillon. I mean, I was wrong on both of these guys, uh, but A.J. Dillon has basically been a very touchdown-dependent player who hasn't been scoring touchdowns. The offense as, an, as a whole is very anemic. We're not really seeing enough work go to either running back to produce RB2 or up or higher numbers. And ultimately, against a Washington Commanders defense that has not been incredible, they've been kind of middle of the pack, I don't see a realistic path for Aaron Jones or A.J. Dillon unless they fall into the end zone to provide you with that good of numbers in week seven. So A.J. Dillon, for me, is an enormous sit. He's basically on my bench until we see that he is going to end up getting uh, a little bit more work or he's starting to get into the end zone a little bit more, which is almost impossible to predict. But the reality is Aaron Jones is also not seeing enough work. A.J. Dillon's been out touching him in the past couple of weeks. And outside of one week against the Chicago Bears, Aaron Jones has only passed 10 and a half fantasy points one other time. So he is not really providing you RB2 numbers right now. So against the team that is average. It's an unfortunate reality that Aaron Jones is more of a flex option than anything this week. And AJ Dillon is basically on your bench until further notice. We're going to have to see Aaron Jones start to get more work or AJ Dillon start to fall into the end zone. Both of these guys for week seven specifically are on my bench. Week eight, things get maybe a little bit better for these guys, but we've got to see a spark of life from the Green Bay Packers offense to trust either of these guys to put up, you know, those RB2, RB1 numbers. And until we do, you just are stuck with them on your team because nobody's buying at a price that you're willing to sell. My next fade is actually on the other side of uh, the other side of the field in this one. It's Brian Robinson going against the Green Bay Packers. Sure, he fell into the end zone last week, but similar to, you know, A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones, if he's not going to fall into the end zone, he's giving you very pedestrian numbers. He's been hyper inefficient. And in his first two games, of course, coming back from, you know, the, the injury he sustained, um, which wasn't really an injury, he was shot. So his efficiency numbers could improve as the season goes on, but he's been really, really inefficient. This is kind of what we expected from Brian Robinson based on his production and prospect profile coming out of college. So ultimately, he's a guy I'm fine putting on my bench this week. Green Bay Packers defense is pretty stout, especially against the run. And so when I look at Brian Robinson, he's a guy I'm fine having on my bench to be a bye week fill in if you're desperate, um, maybe play in the flex because he's probably going to see 15 plus carries in most of his games. But the reality is 15 carries at three yards a carry, three and a half yards a carry is not really producing a fantasy day that you're excited about. So against the Green Bay Packers defense, that's pretty stout. I'm okay putting him on my bench this week. Now, the third one is going to be really quick because he's got a guy you're going to definitely put out there, especially coming off of a bye week. But temper expectations this week for Damian Pierce. I've been wrong on this guy for sure. He has been involved in the passing game, which has helped him not be a touchdown dependent guy like some of the guys we've been talking about. But he's going against the Las Vegas Raiders defense that is better than people give it credit for. So even though he's coming off a bye, I would just temper your expectations. He's going to get a majority of the work and that's why he's going to most likely be in your lineups, especially with the bye weeks that hit this week. But just be realistic with, with Damian Pierce this week. I don't think he's going to put up, you know, top 15 running back numbers unless he does, you know, get into the end zone or he sees that five plus targets. If that can continue, then he's got a better shot. But Damian Pierce is a guy I'm just keeping an eye on this week, but he's definitely in my lineups. All right. So when I look at my starts for the week, I've got three guys. Uh, one, I'm just going to get out of the way because I've been saying that he's taking over this backfield and he's been doing it more and more and more. This week, Travis Etienne has a tougher matchup in the New York Giants, but he's involved enough in the passing game. He's shown that he's explosive. He only needs one or two plays to really make a fantasy day worth it. And Travis Etienne is a guy I like a lot this week. 
With this New York Giants defense, it's likely that he is going to have to be leaned on a little bit more in the passing game than we've seen. I've got Travis Etienne with four plus receptions this week, probably seeing 50 plus yards on the ground. So I like him as a start, even against a tough defense. If you've got James Robinson on your roster uh, in a redraft league, I'm sorry, because I don't think you're going to find a way out of that situation. In a dynasty league, I would see what you can get for him. I'm fine trading him for you know a pair of 2023 thirds at this point, unless you're a contender and you just want him for depth, go ahead and keep him on your roster. But he is essentially a dynasty sell in any capacity, anything you can get for him, because I don't think he is going to be the James Robinson of old anymore. We've kind of seen the beginning of that, or we saw that in the beginning of the season. We saw some flashes, but outside of you know two or three large carries this year, he's been highly inefficient. Before we go any further, I want to remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hit the link in the description below if you want 15% off joining the Nerd Herd, the GM Tool, the extra podcast episode, all of our extra content, personalized rankings for your dynasty leagues. 15% off. You can use the link below or use the promo code 14P. That's the number 14P at checkout and you'll get that 15% off. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Marco underscore 14P. I'm happy to answer all of your questions in the comments below, but I will definitely get to them faster if you hit me up on Twitter. My DMs are always open. Again, at Marco underscore 14P. I'll just see those notifications faster. So feel free to hit me up there as well. All right, so my next two starts are Kareem Hunt and Tony Pollard. So Kareem Hunt had a really, really bad week last week. He's going against the Baltimore Ravens, which is a solid defense, but I think that they kind of start getting him more involved uh, as the season gets a little bit closer here. He's seeing a plenty of opportunity, especially in the red zone. Last week was a little bit of an outlier, but he's just not converting and he's involved enough where I think Kareem Hunt could be a solid flex plus option for you, especially with all of the bye weeks where we're losing tons of players who are normally locks in our lineup. So Kareem Hunt is a sneak flex option against a tough defense this week in Baltimore. And then I also like Tony Pollard. You know, a couple weeks ago, I was telling you Tony Pollard and Zeke were sits. And, you know, whenever that happened, it worked out that they were in fact sits. But they're going against the Detroit Lions, who are letting up just a gross amount of points, uh, whether it be for fantasy or real life football. So I think Zeke and Tony Pollard are both options here. Tony Pollard should be involved enough so that he can provide you that flex plus option, maybe a low end RB2 uh, against these Detroit Lions. I think that he could get, you know, three receptions in this one and fall into the end zone. He's just looks like the more more explosive player in this backfield, even if Zeke is the early grinded out guy and, you know, wears down a defense. Tony Pollard is the spark to this run game. And I think against a very beatable defense, he could score this week. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. That is all I got for you. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Marco underscore 14P. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and sign up for the Nerd Herd. Be kind, do good. I'll see you next time. Peace.